Hello, welcome back to the gutter, the grindhouse gutter. I'm Josh, and I'm joined here with Tiana and Professor hey. Smoke. What is up? We are from the All American Spook Show podcast, which you can listen to every Monday at 6 p.m. East, wherever you get your podcast, and of course, right here on the YouTube channel. We also have other series here on the channel, including Hammer Horror and Order, Video Vortex, lots of other cool stuff. So it's the month of October, which means we're in full fledged spooky mode, right? We've got nothing. I mean, we usually do horror all year round, but we kind of double down a little bit more even, you know, during this month. So what did you bring for us this month, Smoke? Oh, well, today is a special grindhouse gutter. Well, special to me and also Tiana. <laughs> one of our favorite slasher movies. It might even, I'll let Tiana speak for herself to see which one she thinks, you know, what number it is for her. It's certainly in my top three, though, but it's uh, from 1982. It's uh, Juan P. Kier Simon or J.P. Simon's Pieces. Now, you don't have to go to Texas for a chainsaw massacre, right? I might as well show this Blu-ray, too, while I'm at it. When you say top three, you mean like your top three favorite slasher of all time? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, And that, that might be like, you know, people, I don't know. It's it's one of those things that's sort of, uh, I guess anybody's favorite slashers is personal to them or whatever. But that might be a surprise to some people. Most people think slashers, they think American films. But actually, my, my top slasher of all time is Maniac, so. Yeah, that's that's my number one. My number two would probably be this one for me, and I'll let Tiana say what what hers order is. But <laughs> this is my favorite all time slasher. <laughs> <laughs> this one and Nightmare and a Damaged Brain. Yeah, that was I, that was the third one I was going to mention. That yeah. was my yeah. You know, number one is Maniac for me. Number two is probably Pieces, and number three is Nightmare, aka Blood mm-hmm. Splash, aka Nightmare and a Damaged Brain. We'll get to that one at some point down the road too on here. Uh, that one also is not technically, it's sort of a co-production like this one. This is a Spanish American co-production. Uh, Maniac, of course, is American. Uh, and the Nightmare and Damaged Brain is a, I believe, uh, it's made by an Italian who was living in America at the time. So it's kind of an Italian American co-production as well. You know, you know, most people is going to come out with like Halloween, probably or Friday the 13th or The Prowler and uh, Burning and those. And I love all those too. I mean, yeah, I love slashers in general from the 80s. It's just that you know, these are, these were the ones I guess that had, you know, I watched quite a few times back then and they just kind of took that spot for me. I mean, Maniac is just crazy. It's, it's, it's very well made, I think, and tons of gore. This movie that we're watching today or that we're talking about today, pieces, tons of gore. You might arguably whether it's well made or not. It is definitely (laughs) unforgettable once you see it though. Uh, Entertaining as hell. It's fun. (laughs) Right. I mean, that's what you want from these type of movies is just be gory and be fun. You know, nothing you have to sit. It's not a deep thinker or anything like that. True, yeah, you know. yeah. There's not there's a pretty interesting movies. little like. Yeah, there's an interesting little whodunit thing kind of going on here, right? Yeah, it's really more of a. I mean, you, it's European. This is it wears it on the sleeve, you know. And, and by that, I mean that it almost plays out more like a giallo than it does a slasher. But then there, there's reason for that though. Giallos pretty much inspired the slasher genre. In fact, some a couple of scenes from various slashers were cribbed straight from Giallo's, specifically Mario Bava's Twitch of the Death Nerve. Uh, I think there was at least a few kills in that that were eight in the uh, in the Friday the Thirteenth uh, franchise at various points. You know, so yeah, so there's a very much a connection between Giallo's and slashers. It's just Giallo's are very European. This they kind of they take their time to to, to uh, you know lay out the story. There's a lot of red herrings. There's a lot of quirkiness and all this. Sometimes there's a lot of you know, sex and nudity involved in them. Sometimes there's not. That also carries over into the slasher genre. Uh, you know, so yeah, there's a lot of similarities and uh, inspiration from giallos that carried into the slasher genre. Now, this is in the, this isn't even Italian. You know, giallo is specifically Italian, but there were American giallos almost like Brian De Palma. You know, what was the uh, Dress to Kill, I believe, and one maybe mm-hmm. another one that was very very uh, giallo esque, right? Yeah. So yeah, I think I think that the uh, pieces is de- definitely kind of rise that line between your staples of the giallo genre and kind of carries over into the slasher. So it's the gore. Again, that kind of started with giallos. It it kind of got the ante up when it came to uh, slasher movies. The killer though in this movie is very giallo inspired, right? He's got that fedora, black gloves, trench coat type, you know, overcoat thing or whatever. Very very giallo esque there too. So. Maybe that's another reason why <laughs> this one kind of raises rises to the top of me because I have such a huge love for the the giallo genre. So I can't put this one that high, and and, no, for, no reason, <laughs> and for no other reason than the ending. 
we don't, we don't, lose, we don't now, do spoilers here, so we're not going to say. But yeah. I'll just, you know, when you now, watch it, like, what the hell is going on here? By ending, do you mean the very, very end? Or do you mean the two, three, or four semi-endings leading up uh, to the very, very end? No, I'm cool with that, and I almost expect that. It's the very, very end. that I'm like, Yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. All right. It's just funny that there are like, there's like so many points that this movie could have ended before it really did end. And then when it does end with that, you're like, what the fuck? It is very like, like you said, Giallo in that regard too. to me, like there's a lot of, there's a lot of Italian flicks that are like that. Right. That like have those multiple kind of, ah, that's the end. What? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was like, especially as they got further along because they're, they're trying to outdo what came before it. And the same could be said for the slasher genre. <laughs> You know, the, the worst you can do, well, we've said this, the worst you can do for any movie really is to be boring, right? But when it comes to, I guess, giallos or slashers, it was like, how can we up the ante, so to speak? Now, is it, could it be body count? Can it be ridiculously crazy twists? <laughs> you know, this movie kind of has both, certainly has both of those things. Outrageous gore, crazy body count, and, <laughs> and endings that you don't really necessarily, I mean, you know, you think this point, oh, this is the end. Okay, whoa, oh, wait, no. This is the end, and then and then the end comes. You're like, "Holy shit! What the hell is going on?" Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Yeah, yeah. It is something to behold, but I, you know, it, it is it is a lot of fun. It's definitely worth checking out. But like what we do here with Grindhouse Gutter, because I, frankly, I think we're going to cut it a little short because I think this one deserves a deeper dive on the podcast. Oh yeah, so definitely. Like, yeah, you know, there's tons we could talk about here, and, and it, we definitely need to do that, and we will sooner or later. But for what we do here on Grindhouse Gutter is we let the professor do all the grading. So like he does his Grindhouse Gutter rating, which is zero through 10. Kind of the best way we can explain is what makes it, it's, it's grindhouse -y. What makes it all the things, all the elements put together in a stew, zero through 10, where do you land on it? I'll say, I speak for both me and Tiana probably for this. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a 10, definitely a 10 on the Grindhouse meter because of all the things mentioned already. Gore, galore. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the, a lot of times horror movies don't necessarily live up to the tagline. This tagline, like I said off the top, was you don't have to go to Texas for a chainsaw massacre. Well, in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, as we all know, that movie is, is very well made, scripted, with very little violence and gore. I mean, you don't see a whole lot. Everything is implied in that movie, and it's very effective because of that. Well, this movie foregoes all that and shows you the straight up chainsaw ripping flesh right and in, in multiple scenes at least there's far more gore in this movie than there is texas chainsaw mask yeah yeah so it's it's got the gore in spades gore is a 10 uh it's got your you know when you're talking about grindhouse and the the, the nudity slash sexual element is also up there it could be it could be an exploitation i mean it is technically i guess you could this movie covers horror you know subgenre of slasher exploitation sex exploitation kind of in in certain aspects Oh, and we we can't we can't get away without mentioning the kung fu scene. <laughs> yeah, and then they're like, "What was that? Where'd that come from?" That was yet another bit. Of, I think it was just that he had, uh, and I, we'll we'll go into this on the deeper dive. But that guy in that segment, I believe, was uh, Bruce Lee, Bruce Lai, or however you a lot of people pronounce it Bruce Lai. I do believe, but I think it was him. I, don't quote me one hundred percent on it, but I believe that was who that was, right? Bruce L I. <laughs> He was one of the Bruce Lee clones at the time. I could be wrong, though. Maybe it was – maybe I'm thinking another one. I didn't go into it too deep because we aren't really doing the deep dive on this. We'll save that for the show proper at some point down the road here. But, but L, Bruce L.E. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's right. You checked it out before? Yeah. I see it there. Yeah, that's him. Yep. Okay. That's what I was thinking it was, yeah. <laughs> or Bruce L.E., like you said. I think Bruce L.I. was yet another of the – Yeah, there's probably another dude. It's a lot of that. Like When Bruce Lee died, all these dudes kind of came in and tried to – kind of not necessarily take the mantle, but kind of rip them off. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like that producers more so looking for people that were like somewhat like Bruce Lee that they could exploit. And there's a whole subgenre called Bruce exploitation, which is, you know, that. So, but it's so, it's so shoehorned into this movie. It's just like, they must've had the dude for like, Hey, do you mind hanging out for 20 minutes? We got this thing we want you to do. And, you know, and then they just throw it in there. Cause he's there and he attacks, the teacher, or not the teacher, or the, the woman that's pretending she's a tennis coach, right? He just randomly comes in and starts fighting her, kind of gets knocked out or knocked down or something, and then gets up like, oh, I'm sorry about that. Must have had some bad, bad chop suey or whatever. <laughs> she pulled a gun on him, was going to blast his ass, and he, he managed to keep the gun out of her hand, and then 
<laughs> then it just ends up into this whole routine of like, oh, I don't, you know, then it, <laughs> I must have had some bad chop silly. Good night. And then just walk away. <laughs> it just walks off. into that. So, so absurdities like that, are, quirkiness like that, definitely make. They don't necessarily add to the to the movie's script, right? They don't. They aren't going to make this movie be a masterpiece by any means, but they definitely add to the entertainment value and quirkiness and that Grindhouse score. <laughs> because anybody who sees that who's in the Grindhouse movies, like, oh, it's fucking Bruce Lee or you know Bruce Lay or <laughs> L E, however you want to pronounce that particular Bruce name. One more thing before we get to your final rating on it. I think you know how we always say Jaws made you scared to go in the ocean, and Alien made you made me scared to become an astronaut. This movie should make you scared to get into a waterbed, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that random, you know, that scene too. That's just yet another part of the absurdity of this movie. They mm-hmm. they ta- they mention it. They throw the waterbed thing out there early on because they say, "Oh, do you know we got a waterbed now?" You know, and you're thinking, as you know, you don't think anything of it other than. If you really would have thought about it, well, why why do you have a waterbed? And, yeah, and it was in, and it was in a weird spot too, wasn't it? Like in the gym or the? Well, honestly, where it was was in somebody's garage because they're going to be throwing. The, there's going to be water and mess and fake blood all over the place. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they probably said in somebody's garage. We just put a waterbed in in the workout room or wherever the hell it was. Like in a <laughs> yeah. odd spot in a yeah, it was. And you could th- see the gears turning their head. There, th- somebody thought that, oh, it'll be cool to have somebody get killed on a waterbed. That hasn't been done. You're up in the ante that I was talking about. Nobody does it. Cool. Yeah, it, it does, does look cool, but it just doesn't make sense. No, nah, because they also you can see where the gears were turning, and you can also see where the budget was. Nobody's going to allow. They aren't going to have the money to build a set of a bedroom where logically this waterbed would be to have the killing take place, and nobody's going to have <laughs> you know let them do that to their own bedroom. With this water all over the place and fake blood and everything else, right? So I, they, they just went the cheap route and uh, set it up in somebody's garage so that the water and blood could just, you know, hit the garage floor and be fine. But yeah, it doesn't make logical sense at all. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, no. Well, here on Grindhouse Gutter, the one last thing that you do is you give out a zero through five rating. So this is kind of like stars, except here we have a different scale. So it depends on what genre of movie that we're watching. So for this one, since it's a horror, you're going to be giving out cleavers. So Zero through five, how many cleavers do you want to give it? You can take this one because you already know. <laughs> I'm sure we're going to follow. I'm going to let you have it because I'm pretty sure you're going to follow where I follow. <laughs> five cleavers for this one, for the grind house. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's yep. where I would have fallen. <laughs> it's just a perfect movie that fits the grind house theme. I will say, yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, sometimes I watch these these grindhouse gutter selections with that lens of like, all right, really, how how much – how cool would this have been in those days? You know? know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why for me, that's, and I, see, I don't know how many, how, what the first year was you saw this. I didn't see this till 2014. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. I don't remember what the first time I saw this. I think it was before back in these that. VHS days for me, I was renting this back in whatever, 88, 87. <laughs> I don't think it was quite that long ago, but I want to say it was like sometime in the late nineties, probably. And that's why my score is so high for it. Cause I saw, I've, you know, the first time I saw this, I mean, did I? I probably wouldn't have thought, you know, there was any great. I certainly wouldn't give it a five <laughs> the first time I saw it. It's one of those movies that even now with this, you know, if you if you've never seen it and you go out based on my rating of, you know, we gave it a five and then we give it a ten on the grindhouse. The ten on the grindhouse, you'll understand if you see it. But most people probably aren't going to say that. They think that's a five movie. What's wrong with these people? <laughs> it really grows on you. I think if you are open to these types of movies. Oh, yeah it's going to grow on you. If you don't like it quite so much the first time, by the time you see it the second or third time, these absurdities grow on you and, you, mm-hmm. and you're like, then you're like, oh, okay, this, I, I kind of get it now. Maybe I don't get the five, but I still at least get it somewhat right. It's going to take repeated views. Anybody that's watching this series, Grindhouse Gutter, they know to trust your opinion <laughs> by now. So like, yeah, if they're into Grindhouse movies and, and it's ones they haven't seen, I would think that yes, they would. Or if it's somebody who's trying to dip their toes in the water, I mean, this is one that you should start with, like, yeah. like, or like any number of the other ones we had like done on the shows, like Zombie or uh, Ilsa, She Wolf of the SS, or any, you know these these ones that we've given as gr- as gory and as goofy in some spots as this movie can be. Yes, this is probably more your entry level into this type of movie. You know, yeah, because it's, you would enjoy even if you don't like generally like these yeah. type of movies. Yeah, because it's got that. It's entertaining because of its absurdity. It's got the high body count and the high gore level, so it's not like it's you're 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 not getting cheated, you know, at all by the you know by the gore in this movie. It's going to be up there. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, and like I said, it's that quirky, like the kung fu scene, the end, <laughs> all the waterbed scene, the <laughs> it's just quirky throughout. And also, oh, we didn't mention, I can't think of his dude's name right now. That big dude, the big guy who was in who played oh, Bluto yeah, and Popeye. He plays Bluto and Popeye is in this movie. <laughs> oh God, yeah. That yeah. guy's a character in his own right. No matter what his movie he's in, he, yeah, his facial expressions. Are... <laughs> I mean, you can see why they chose him for Bluto. And that, actually, that was probably not too many years apart from here. I don't know which one he did first, to be honest. Yeah, with and remember uh, Edmund Purdom, you know, the Dane. Remember, he was in yeah. uh, Don't Open Till Christmas. Yes, right. right. Yeah. 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 And all that stuff that we talked about, but that was almost literally a year ago, I think. So they're so, all yeah, familiar faces. faces. Yeah, definitely. Definitely familiar faces. Some bigger names, well, or at least. I don't know that he was a bigger name, but like I said, the guy that played Bluto and Popeye, that and was at least the, a, a um, you know bigger Hollywood movie for him. Police officer. Police officer. Oh, uh, yes. Um, from uh, Fulci's we, that we've done on here as well. That was uh, Christopher Hells. George. Oh, Christopher yeah, George, yeah, City yeah, of Living sure. Dead, Gates of Hell. Well, I mean, I, I think there's pro- honestly, it's always a monthly challenge to see if you can go any higher than that, I, which I seriously doubt. I mean, a, what, a 10 on the grindhouse gutter rating and a five. Yeah, yeah. Flavors. <laughs> You're not going to get much higher than that. But what are we going to be talking about next month? So, so let's see if you can continue the success. Oh, yeah. So we haven't, uh, you know, looking back on the breakdown of Grindhouse Gutter here recently, you know, it's spooky season. It's October. So, of course, we're doing horror. Uh, and the, But before this, we also did a horror movie. And then we split it up with something else maybe. And then there was two horror movies before that. So we've been heavy handed on the horror. So I'm going to go back. One thing we haven't gotten to in a while is the kung fu genre. So uh, I'm going to go back to that. I'm going to pull out a, another bona fide absolute classic. And it's uh, the Grindhouse title for this was Master Killer, right? But the other, probably today, the most well known title of it is, is the 36 Chamber of Shaolin. Shaw Brothers, classic right here. And if you don't even know Kung Fu that much and you know Wu Tang Clan, then 36 Chambers should be, you know, familiar <laughs> to you, at least in name, you know. So. So yeah, we'll be getting to that classic kung fu flick from Shaw Brothers. Yeah, that would be the that be the first one that we've watched since I think when I looked at it, it was like February. So it's been a while since we've watched any kung fu. That's right, and that was another Shaw Brothers classic. Uh, maybe not, you know, it was an '80s Shaw Brothers classic. It was Chinese Super Ninjas or Five Element Ninjas, <laughs> whichever title you want to go with. So yeah, looking forward to that. So uh, like we said, t- stick around here on the channel. We've got tons of stuff: video vortex, hammer horror in order. Uh, episodes of the podcast are up, uploaded here and we encourage you to check out every Monday at 6 p.m. East, wherever you listen to your podcast, the All-American Spook Show podcast. So for Donnie and Will, who, who weren't here today, Tiana, Professor Smoke, I'm Josh, and we'll talk to you next month. Mm-hmm.